This is the most bloom I've ever seen on my witch hazel. And I saw it out the window yesterday, the last day of February, and had to work out of town, so I couldn't cut any. And they look a little, a little bit frozen. But I'm going to make something quick today before I have to go out of town again. Spring is coming slowly. The first thing I have in the garden that blooms, and this is the first year I have a good bloom on it, is the witch hazel. And I wasn't sure which arrangement I'd like to do. The black and tall I thought would look good with the bare branches with the red bloom. Or also a landscape, maybe something leaning in this dark blue bowl. I simply stuck the branches into that vase and I could use that by itself as an arrangement. So I think what we'll do is take a picture of that. I didn't want to cut too many branches. It's a small shrub. And I'll just use these branches again and do a second ikebana in a more of a landscape form or a slanting form in this bowl. I could add something right here as a focal point or it's fine with just those branches. The beauty of the branches is enough in its simplicity. I'm using a large Kenzan because these branches are quite thick, so I need to make sure it will not lose its stability. This is a three inch Kenzan, and I need a pretty strong cutters as well. And I'll cut this on a slant. My helper today, Hiromi's out, Gandalf is, he's at dog day today, isn't he, girl? Now this is one possibility, and another possibility would could be to take it out the other way, or out the other way with this shape. Now we'll look at some possibilities. So that on its own is a beautiful, simple arrangement. But I might like to put a rock. That would be another possibility. This rock picks up the red color. So again, your own personal taste. I've also found a nice large succulent in one of my house plants. And I'm going to take a look at how that might look there. And I don't have a lot of floral material. I didn't buy any flowers today because I've been traveling. So I like the green with the red and the blue bowl. But again, the focal feature there could be taken out and simply the feature of the lines could be left in. So many possibilities, your own taste, and sometimes limiting yourself in the materials really brings out creative things that you can do with simple materials. Of course, to Hiromi, this is just a fancy watering bowl.
I have here two Ikebana arrangements. One is a freestyle arrangement, and one is a basic arrangement. Sometimes I read comments on YouTube about Ikebana when someone's doing freestyle, and people say, well, that's not Ikebana, that's not the proper rules. We use the rules in the early part of Ikebana. We do a basic arrangement, an upright in a vase, or a moribana style, which is in a flat bowl. But when you do freestyle, you can use any container, and you don't follow any particular rules. So what we're learning in doing the basic arrangement are basic design fundamentals. We pay attention to the, the negative space, or the space where there's no floral material, as well as the lines. We use an asymmetrical design element. We're designing in triangles. These are all some of the basic elements in design. So if you were learning to play an instrument, then you would start, say, learning to finger chords on the guitar or learning your scales on the piano or for singing, learning your scales, and then trying to apply what you're learning in the voice. And we're to working your with the thoughts. basic ikebana. We're training our eye to leave that negative space and to have beautiful flow through the arrangement. In the Sogetsu school, students work their way through a, a textbook. This is one of the books. There's two books in one. And in the first two books, most of the arrangements are the basic ikebana following the rules. So we have in different forms of, of ikebana, there may be different names for the heaven line, the shim line or the heaven line. And they're different names depending on the school. But they all represent heaven, man, and the earth, those three elements. And they're all at particular angles. And then in this book, for instance, as you're working through all the possibilities, the kenzan, which we might call the frog, or also means the mountain of swords, the kenzan that we put the flowers into, that might be placed at any different spot in the container. This is a basic upright style. We have also slanting style, and we might have the heaven line on this side or on this side, moving to the front on this side or that side. Those are all the different possibilities that are explored in the basic book. So this one is a freestyle ikebana, so I'm not following strict rules here. Another thing that maybe we could look at in certain schools, the Kenzan would be hidden, putting rocks or foliage there. And other school of ikebana, that's not a concern. So the schools are different, and the basics are different. The basics are where we get our foundation and train our eye. And then freestyle, you do whatever you like. Here's a closer look at the upright style Moribana. Now in the book, of course, different materials are used. You can always choose your own materials, what you have handy. These are branches that are budding. It's almost March, so the magnolia buds are starting to swell. I have salal foliage, and I have also mums. The Kenzan in the book is placed to the front, but my bowl is not the strict Ikebana bowl. It's round, so the Kenzan won't sit properly if I move it too far to the front. It will tilt a little bit, but I could certainly do that. So this is how we would change the arrangement by moving the Kenzan around to different positions. And then here is a freestyle arrangement, working around this sculpture again with magnolia branches and lilies, salal foliage, and I have a little succulent house plant. If we take a look around the back, it's just a little glass container with a Kenzan 